So uh, this is the All or Nothing Show. My name's Austin. I've got the boys with me, Brock and Griffin. Yo. And special guest today, Jesse Westover from The Nutrition Junction. What's up, everybody? Hey, what's happening, dude? Um, thank you for coming on, taking the time out of your day to, to chat with us. Live from Minnesota, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's not a frozen temperature state. right now, so we're doing all right. I had to confirm with Austin, too. It's Is it mountain time where y'all are at, or is it central? Uh, central, yeah. What is mountain so, time? I, don't know. I think that's like U- Utah and like Utah? that. Yeah. yeah. Colorado-ish. Yeah. yeah. But I had to make sure because I, I figured you were probably an hour back, so I was telling Austin, like, we can't tell him 12. And then, you know, he gets just, on at like 11 or like, I, I didn't know. think of it yeah. at the time. I, I, didn't, I truly didn't think there was an hour difference, but I guess there is. It's far enough away. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Well, anyways, we, uh, we want to definitely dive into your story, how you got into the supplement space, the industry, starting your own business uh, and go from there. So the Nutrition Junction, what is that? Is it it's an on time, online retailer distributor of supplements, right? Right. Yeah. Tell so I what about it. My start was not, I did not want to do e-commerce at first, actually. I wanted a retail store, but that's fucking expensive. And I don't have the funds for that. Yeah. So it was e-commerce was honestly just the cheaper way to start out, get my start. And then as the bank account agrees and everything kind of works out, um, it truly is never a perfect time, but it's just e-commerce to start and then the goal of a physical store. So, you know, that actually leads me to a question because one of the questions that I got from my box was asking whether you tended intended to have a brick and mortar and when do you think that will be um within the next year and a half i was actually planning for it before covid but then covid came and just fucked everything up so um yeah year and a half that's Hopefully leading into so many it. questions yeah, for no. me it's like hitting all like the ones i wrote down one question i had was basically uh which one do i want to go with because you kind of led into two i'll start with uh this one and then i'll get to the covid ones and remind me of that but i was gonna say basically let me pull up exactly the question because it was basically related to brick and mortar versus online so i wrote basically was actually connected to covid with covid happening do you feel like it was a net gain or loss for your business meaning like overall obviously there's ups and downs that we went through that jim flow went through whatever but overall do you think you actually probably grew through the time period and actually probably are in a better situation than you would be whether it not happened because my mindset is obviously covid took a big hit on the in-person retail stores and i feel like it almost showed that in the long run i don't know how long these in-person retail stores and brick and mortar shops are going to be not that they'll be go away completely but i just think for the most part, because people obviously still love that in-person connection, but I think overall, everyone's buying things online, whether it's Amazon or, you know, I I can't think of the last time I went in person to buy a supplement. Half of that is, you know, they may not have it in the store local to me. And the other half of that is it's just easy. It's easy to just get, you know, a lot of times you're getting free shipping or it's cheap shipping. It's right to your house. You don't have to go to some GNC or some supplement store, have some guy try and sell you on something. And so I wonder, um, Obviously, there's something, you know, to be made with brick and mortar. And I think, you know, that we all know Jacob Davis is crushing it with the nutrition store and things like that. So there's definitely um, in-person connection that can't be replaced. But where do you see, I guess, supplement retail going? And is, is brick and mortar still in the plans? It sounds like it is. And what do you, I guess, how do you plan on making that transition? Yeah. So I have, I, my industry experience started in a GNC actually for four years, unfortunately. Um, (laughs) but you were that guy. (laughs) Yes. And no, that's, that's actually why I left because I refused to do the whole typical GNC shit. Um, but I think there's always going to be a spot for, for retail. First off, the kind of like Jacob does, you have to want somebody to come into your store like nine times out of 10, the other like corporate supplement stores you're not going to want to go in there unless your buddy works there but like tns for example in south carolina people want to go in there because of those three guys yeah they're so first you have to make someone want to go in your store and second off i think when with newer supplement users probably not so much like us because i can just order something online if i didn't have it here but if you're newer to supplements you're taking something in your body you don't might not know what it is so a lot of people I found want to go in person and ask somebody. Yeah. So like the newer supplement user, or even if you've only taken protein, you would see gym flow online. You see new pep. Like, what the fuck is that? Yeah. So I think there's well, something. Yes. Yeah. 
there's something there's something e-commerce can't bring to the supplement world which is like in-person connection which is when it comes to ingredients people aren't going to want to talk to a chat bot about what's new pept or this other ingredient they can't pronounce so yeah, i think there'll be, always be a spot for it yeah that's a good point yeah what did you feel like when you started um you know having that four years at gnc what did you feel like you wanted to do differently or like you know with all of us i feel like we've all kind of grown from something beforehand that it's in within the same field but you kind of learn like what you want to carry with you and what you would want to change what did you feel like just continuing that supplement sales that you wanted to do differently than you had been doing before besides doing your own thing right so with corporate stores like gnc obviously they have a they have a motive i guess where me it's like if someone wants gym flow like say if i have a physical store if someone wants to come in and say if, like even if i have a house brand which i don't say yeah. if somebody comes in looks at gym flow inspired and um i don't know corn nutritionals if they look at those three i truly don't care which one they get as long as it helps them yeah, yeah. so i feel like your corporate store since they have such a high overhead and all this other stuff they have to hit they want you of course they want you to buy the house brand because their margin is higher on it, which is gotcha. it's like, it's kind of shitty, but I, as long as somebody gets something that helps them, I truly don't care what it is. Um, Cause if I don't like it, if it's not a good product, it's not going to be affiliated with me. So yeah. if it's a sketchy product that has like SARMs or something in it, like it's probably not going to be on my shelves or my site. So um, I guess that it's just, if somebody buys a product and it helps them, I'm cool with it. Like if, they go with gym flow over core. It's cool if you go, you know. So I guess that that's the biggest thing yeah, for me. A hundred percent. We are we aren't for everybody with gym flow. Obviously, you know, we we aren't going to be the only products that everybody should take. Uh, so we get that, and I think that's a good mindset for anybody in this space is to uh, give them what they need and not what you want to give them. You know, because right. it's going to create a you know a returning customer, a lifelong customer, because they're going to earn. They're, you're going to earn their trust. Yeah. Right. And especially these days, people aren't stupid. Like people talk. If you, if you go in there and somebody tells you they want a low stem pre, just for example, you yeah. go in there and try to sell them your house brand that has 400 milligrams of caffeine with like all these other stems they don't want. Yeah. It's pretty clear that what's pretty clear what you're doing. Like, Oh yeah. And so. I, you can see that a lot. Like, you know, you walk into a store and I think fat burners can definitely be a culprit of that. You know, just be like, Oh, we have this house brand, but you know, they, they just say they're trying to lose weight, but they don't even dive into like the basics of just like, hey, what are you eating? How much yeah. activity are you doing? And it's just, yeah. oh, let's slap this, you know, fat burner on there and get that sale yeah. and get you out the door, you know, yeah. whatever. When you first started, what was what was your inventory like? Or like, what did you feel like you had and were able to actually start a business with? Yeah, so when I started, thankfully, I did orders for my stores all the time. So I kind of knew what I had to get, but I always started slow. Like yeah. I bring in a, it was, it's kind of funny A certain brand, I'm not going to say the name, but that I first started with because of my name, they thought I was more like, uh, I thought I was more solidified, which like, I don't know how to take that, but they're like, Oh, you only want four units of our pre-workout. Like we thought you were more solidified. I was like, well, so with inventory, I always start slow. Worst case scenario, you have to just order more and keep yeah. kind of doing it. Um, with e-commerce was kind of rough because I, I didn't honestly, I had no idea what to expect when I started. I was just kind of like pin the tail on the donkey, eyes closed and hope you fucking get it somewhat right. So, yeah. Um, and that's, that's, I, you know, being on the sales side of gym flow, I have stores that order, you know, four or six units or something and I don't question it at all. I mean, it's support yeah. is support in any way, any way. I mean, right. I can see, I guess where other people businesses might just want like oh i need some volume moving but it's just like at the end of the day hey they're supporting so yeah. yeah it was something that um i was i know we were talking about like two weeks ago we were looking at a certain brand getting more of their energy drinks in because i haven't been able to get them from europa and these different distributors mm -hmm. and uh i filled out the application on the website you know kind of set up an account with them and then at the end after it said like complete it said, oh, like an energy drink order has to be a minimum 80 cases. And I was like, 80 cases for the gym? I was like, that's like 900 drinks. I was like, we're never never yeah. moving through that. Um, and, you know, Austin was like, you know, I get the, the company's a little bit bigger, but he was like, man, money's money. Like everyone everyone counts. Everyone matters. And yeah, some of these, matter. I mean. One case or 80 cases. I know. I get it. And, like, yeah. for example, um, shout out to Ray's. Like, Ray's obviously does good business. But, you know, I yeah. reached out to uh, – 
Austin Holt with them, and he was like, you know, seven cases, whatever you guys, you know, wanted to order at the time, like I'll get it sent yeah. out to you. And so, I, you know, I think that's that's good business, whether you, you know you're small, like you know your your company right now, or even bigger. I feel like that's the right mindset. Yeah, I feel like that's like the whole minimum order thing, which which is fine. People have it, but I feel like it's like I have people coming to me as saying they want to start a subscription service because it's guaranteed income, and I, I just kind of feel like that's what people like. Eighty cases that might be fine for like your GNCs or whatever, but like. Yeah, it's just like they want a guaranteed income, which is like not the, not how it works. Yeah, I'm not well, sure if uh, I asked this earlier or Griffin. No, no, no. Oh, did you say something? Oh, no, no, no. You're fine. Go ahead. <laughs> he was gonna talk. You're like, oh, fuck no, you. I, I didn't hear him. Well, you're I all the way good. on side yeah. of Brock yeah. now. Yeah. Uh, yeah, We're keeping ahead, six yours. feet between y'all. Oh, I was, uh, I was cu- just curious. You know, in the day and age of like. I feel like supplements have been a big boom in the last, you know, five years or so with Instagram or other things like that. Do you ever feel like you kind of have to be a collector to be able to have all these new ones of like the ghost or like the gorilla mind or all these different things that have come out in the past couple of years? Or do you feel yeah. like you kind of have like tried and true ones that are just, you know, you see what's selling or you see what people like and you can just stick with those? Or do you feel like you kind of have to keep finding more and more to stay kind of like relevant, quote unquote? Um, I feel like, I mean, there's always those tried and true brands that are going to like always kind of sell, but yeah. there's, I mean, in the supplements, there's always a new brand every single day. Yeah. So yeah. if it's one of those things where like, it's one of my buddies that starts the brand, like, um, not going to say an example, but like it, if it's one of my buddies, I'll bring it in and I know they're a good person yeah. and they're not a piece of shit. I'll bring it in to support them, but it's kind of a just guess. Um, but with so much stuff come out in the supplement world, it's kind of hard to say. Of course, you want the newest thing, especially if there's a bunch of like craze around it. Um, you kind of want to bring it in. Yeah, so, is- like an example, I um, back when Arms Race first started, I was I was talking to Pat and I asked if they're going to wholesale it or whatever, and they said they're going to keep to themselves, and then they they go on with that. So that's an example. Like, say if Austin started a new brand tomorrow, um, I'd support it because he's a good person. But if I don't know. Kind of a long answer there, but yeah, no, I get it. I get it. I mean, there needs to, you know, there. It's definitely helpful when there's demand there or like hype behind it, like you're saying. Yeah. And then also there needs to be like some type of loyalty given to you. Like it can't be a one way street. It needs to be fair for both parties, you know, to to make money, right. to to bring value to the customer and uh, be supportive of each other. You know, so if it's if it's a one way street and it's just like, hey, I'm just trying, I'm in there to make that buck, then obviously you can read that. I'm sure being in it long enough. Right. One yeah. thing. Oh, no, you, did you have more to add to that? I was no. going to say, one thing I thought of when you mentioned uh, like a friend starting a company was have you had any friends or people that you know are somewhat close to you that have uh, tried to buy from you like at wholesale price instead of paying like, you know, yeah. profit wise, profit margins? Discount, yeah. You know what I'm yeah. Friend discount. <laughs> yeah. They're like, hey, uh, if you give it to me for your cost, I'll post it on Instagram. I was like, thanks, dude, but fuck you. Like, yeah. like, yeah. No. Yeah. Like, like, what, yeah. your 300 sure. followers? Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Like, yeah. So, yeah, I get it. Like, it's just like, what makes you think you deserve that? And yeah. Plus, like, if you were a true friend, you'd support me 100%. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it's like, I'm always one to give people shit so like people feel bad. Like when I post like Austin, I'm sure you've seen it. When I post on Instagram, there's people that like text me and say sorry. Like, what the f- what are you apologizing for, man? Like they just think <laughs> out to get them. And I'm like, you know? Yeah. So. I get it. Well, uh, I, I wanted to definitely jump into this question. And it's, you know, a question that I like to think about, you know, knowing Brock's story with the gym and whatnot. And, uh. Did you start the Nutrition Junction with your own money that you've just raised up over time, just slowly buying inventory? Did you get some type of loan or help family, friend, anything like that? So the like little stuff like the trademark, the LSC fees, that was just all cash I saved up. But like the inventory, it's like it was a credit card. So yeah, ran off credit cards. Now it's like at first I couldn't really budget, but now there's a whole budgeting. Like if I get X amount of sales, I spend X amount in product. So yeah. now there's a rhythm to it. But at first I was just like, well, Fuck. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it's always make it in. up as you go. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. definitely. Yeah. Especially, the, yeah, especially the first couple months, it was just like, well, I don't know if this is enough, but we're just going to go for it. And Yeah. Yeah. I, I also, um, for any hopeful entrepreneurs out there, I also, um, a lot of what we funded, we had the funds, but um, sometimes, you know, well, A, you want to maximize cash back and B, um, some things even like now, for example, that are bigger purchases or machine packages, you know, 
you might not have the cash on hand, but you know over time you will. And I feel like um, so many people just jump to loans, which you know is definitely an option. But I think credit cards are such a a viable option that's easier almost to get approved for pretty quickly, and you can either run it personal or business. And um, a you're building up credit. B, you get cash back, and C, you know, in, in my mind, it works a little simpler than thinking I have to pay someone back. It's more like paying off a bill that over time that I'm, I'm used to doing, you know, with normal things, you know, whether it be um, groceries or normal things that I'm putting on a credit card. Yeah. Like people, like people always think they need all this money, which you do, but like they always jump right to a loan. I'm like, well, that's, that's bad. There's a line of credit. There's a credit card. There's, I mean, if you want to go that route and investor, which I don't yeah. think I'd ever do because that sense of owing somebody money, I just, yeah. I hate it. so it's, yeah. there's always other ways to do it other than just straight to a loan. It's like, let's, let's pump the brakes a little bit and think about it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. When I started gym flow, uh, I guess I really haven't dove into this besides like one video I did a while back is, you know, we did it the loan route. I had a small zero. loan of a million dollars. Yeah, it's just <laughs> one million. I'm just kidding. But, uh, if we did that and we're still <laughs> where, where we are, we're yeah. fucked. But, uh, no hope. but, uh, I didn't have any credit at the time. So it was like the only kind of option that I had. I had zero credit cards, never paid like a bill on anything before in my life. So, was, you know, fortunately I had a family friend, that uh, had some money and obviously we, he was like a silent investor, obviously didn't give us any type of like equity to the company. He just loaned us the money. We paid the interest back, blah, blah, blah. But it definitely sucks having that pressure over top of you, knowing that somebody's reaching out to you once a month or once every six months to get some interest or to figure out, Hey, how's it looking? You know, I'm ready to get my money back. It's it's some pressure on that. Yeah. Yeah. Dog, the bounty hunter comes. Yeah. Waiting to get my knees broken in. (laughs) Say, do you take doge? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Uh, So, Speaking of the nutrition junction, how did that name come about? Um, so I was, <laughs> I had this idea of wanting to start this for a while. And I honestly thought of it mopping my old supplement store. Like it just came to me and like, yeah. there's this bar in Minneapolis called Whiskey Junction. <laughs> and I like whiskey. And I, I was there a while ago before I, when I thought of this and I said, Junction, nutri- son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah. And all the other names I thought of were either trademarked or they were just yeah. fucking stupid. Like. Uh, so yeah. So you did get it trademarked. Yeah. Yep. Nice. Uh, la- last year yeah, I yeah. started, I think I, God, I think I put in the application for trademark before I even launched my website because Ryan at fitness informant, he told me to, and I was like, fuck it. Okay. Whatever. Yeah. And, and it's, like, you know, it's, it's definitely a smart move. Yeah. You know, uh, especially being online, like you are, uh, yeah. as, you know, being solely online, mm-hmm. but, uh, and fortunately for a lot of people out there, you know, because when I posted my trademarks a while back, everybody was like, man, that must have been expensive. It's not cr- truly that expensive if you do it yourself. Yeah. Now, if you go with the trademark lawyer, they're going to charge literally like it's a couple thousand dollars where me, I paid 225 bucks or something. Yeah. And then I actually messed up. So I had to pay another like 200 bucks because oh, my shit. like the use of how you have to prove it's you basically. Yeah. Me at the time, I put in, I sent a screenshot on my website, which is proof of use in commerce. Yeah, yeah. And it was password protected. So at the time, I didn't think about it. But they're like, hey, I know it's been like almost a year, but you have to submit actual not. I was like, why did I do that? Damn. <laughs> but so I had to Living pay another like $200 for that. But it's a lot better than paying some lawyer a grand. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. That is funny. Thinking yeah. about that, like, what were some early mistakes that you made early on that? maybe you've learned from or like you still kind of um, kick yourself sometimes thinking about so the whole inventory thing i bought like luckily i had good credit when i started when i was i think i was 20 23 just turned 24 when i started um and i just bought too much inventory like i should have just pumped the brakes a little bit like it was needed like a startup like this is like kind of just like a gym you have to buy equipment so like you have to have stuff to sell but i still could have pumped the brakes a little bit and like not bought as much that was the biggest thing. And for like the first six to eight months with supplements, I'm like a kid in a candy shop. Like, Oh, inspired has a new product. Let me bring that in. And I just didn't budget well. So like I ran a store before. So I know like, okay, if you sell 10 grand a product this month, you're probably going to have to buy four or five grand in product to restock. And then, so I just didn't have a budget my first six, six to eight months, which was just stupid. But I just bought like I was a kid in a candy shop and which you kind of almost have to do to have stuff to sell. Kind of like a gym, you need equipment, but you sh- I still should have pumped the brakes a little bit. So. Yeah, there's almost like the essentials that, like, obviously you're not going to open up a gym without dumbbells, so you need your essentials, right. the dumbbells, the barbells, the racks. Yeah. But, you know, when you get into your, your pendulum squat or your, you know, yeah. specialty row, it's like you can 
at least get the business going, get the profit, yeah. get the recognition. Or man, I was about to try and s- pronounce a word and completely butcher it. But point is, get people to know that and understand the brand, and then you know starts invest, buy the newer stuff, and then once you do that, you bring in these new brands. It's almost like oh, people feel like. You know, they can see the growth, they can see the progress, they can see, oh, the gym's growing as I've been a member. So it's, you know, I feel like I'm getting, you know, increased value. So, right. You know. And plus, like, you know, some of your previous customers and like OG customers get to grow along with you. And they're like, damn, I remember Jesse when he, yeah. you know, was still at his house, you know, doing this or doing that, man, working three yeah. jobs. Yeah. Still, yeah. still do it three <laughs> still jobs. Do yeah. Hey, yeah. Go yeah. knock it, man. Yeah. I get it. I get it. What well, do you uh, feel like? Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. <laughs> you um, I can't see you over this giant know. head in the way. I know. Um, what do you feel like? I I know at the gym or with gym flow, like there's always a different kind of degree of separation in terms of like, I feel like we think of ourselves as a different entity than like a Gold's or something like that. How do you feel like you are as far as a retailer in comparison to like a GNC? Do you feel like it's it's going to stay more of a private thing? Do you want it to become like a direct competitor at some point, or like what? How do you kind of think of it that way? Um, so I never I never want to be like I, money. It's like as long as I can live, I don't care. I've never had a goal of hitting some net worth. I feel like if I get as big as GNC, I'd have to do some of the sketchy, schemey things they do. Oh. Um, as so, long story short, I never want to get as big as GNC or anything because once you try to get that big and you have all these locations, you have to do something to make money. Like so, it's and you have to put these rules in place, which I feel like would affect my ethics and morals. Being as like if right now if somebody buys gym flow if somebody i don't care what they buy as long as it helps them like yeah. and i feel like if i try to get as big as those other guys i'll like put into i'll put my values and ethics in the way and those it's hard to carry the same values to yeah. each employee to each location you know like the powerhouse gym in, in columbus is going to have a different vibe and feel in management than you know powerhouse in new jersey and things like that you know it's yeah. just yeah yeah function so I've never wanted to get like super big, but um, we'll see. We'll see where it goes. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And I feel like you know this doesn't happen for every business out there, and you know maybe I'm like overthinking or thinking too vague, but like you know the usually when you get massive like that, somehow you know your margin, your your product usually gets diminished somehow. Whether it's you know your service, you cut, you end up having to cut things to make you know profit keep to keep scaling keep scaling once you get right. you know to a certain certain size so you know not right. to say that all these other big brands out there are doing that but there's some out there that are having to cut corners yeah. to continue scaling to get yeah. that massive some retailers like some some buddies of mine got their product into like retailers like ryan fitness and format uh fit butters i had no idea like just literally a couple months ago i found out all these fees that these retailers have like if they pay you one time they get an x percent discount it's like what pay you one time know. Yeah, like these big huh. retailer, these big retailers at Target and all that shit, they have some crazy fees, dude. It's it's nuts. Like for a coupon, you have to like it's 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 nuts. It's like Damn. you pay it's like Jim Flow would pay them and it's just it's nuts. It's so just I'd like, pay them to have my product in there. Yeah, and like some other sites I heard from just other people, it's like say if I have a Jim Flow banner, I'd say, Hey Austin, I'll put Jim Flow as my front banner if you pay me like a grand. It's like I don't wanna like mm. It, it, that's when you yes yeah, that's just like i don't want to all these ridiculous fees I'm, yeah i get it, it it's crazy so one question i was thinking about when i was kind of uh reviewing your website again this morning just to think of some good topics i was thinking about asking you was do you make your own graphics on the website like some of those kind of like banners kind of on the home page and uh even you know if you do or don't how do you balance kind of knowing what to outsource um, on like, as far as like things you know needed to be done for the website, and what do you keep, or, or like skills do you develop on your own because you are like a solo operation, you know? Right. So like most of the website banners, I want to look good, and I kind of suck as at like graphic design. So my buddy TK does it. He's so he's kind of well known in the industry, I guess. But he does all the graphics I want to look good. Um, like the Instagram posts I do, but the simple stuff I'll do, and I'm still trying to learn. Um, but most of the stuff, like the banners, I have somebody else do. Yeah, we try so. to teach this uh, grandpa over here Photoshop sometimes, and he'll do it nah, dude. his way. And we teach I, him so there's way. a thing. <laughs> there's like three – there might even be like six different ways you can get a job done on Photoshop. Sometimes I might take the yeah. scenic route. 
Right. Yeah. And yeah. yeah, that's, that's something I've learned with friends like Landon and Chris from inspired. They're like, you do what you can do like that with one click. I'm like, <laughs> that's what I, well, that's I was like, <laughs> all right. I got it done. That, yeah. It gets cool. done. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> shit. So I'm learning too. Yeah. Which, uh, respect to them. They, they put out some really cool, uh, graphic design work. Yeah. They're just nuts. Yeah. And like to have the creative, uh, the brain for that too. Cause I can have some thoughts, but I can't put it to paper. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like they have it and they can get it to go out of their hand, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. Just, yeah. It's, it's impressive. It's not, it's something I couldn't do as a graphic designer. It's just like seeing Chris's like computer and his screens he has up. I was like, dude, what the fuck is that? Like, yeah. that's how you make, like, that's all of those layers make this like, what yeah, the, yeah. it's just nuts. Very cool. Very, uh, very oh. respectable labels and designs for sure. Exactly. Um, before we hopped off and uh, switched with the camera. So besides the nutrition junction, you work one, if not two other jobs, right? Two other jobs. Then yeah. if you want to consider the national guard a job, I don't no, know. It definitely is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, how, how often are you just doing duty every other two weeks or something like that or biweekly, right? So it's like people always think that the National Guard and they're like one week in the month, one one week in the month, two weeks a year. That's the biggest yeah. crappy shit I've ever. It's like it's so it's that's what they'd like you to think. But there's just random. There's just random things you got to do. Um, but yeah, that ends up being like one weekend out of the month. And like, of course, with their most recent, we were on duty for a month because people can't behave. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I get it. Um, so when you're doing that stuff, you have your brother help yeah. you out with the shop. Yeah. So I taught him, uh, how to, how to do orders, pack orders. It's not, I mean, Shopify is not too hard. Just, no, you just click a few buttons and print the print the shipping label. So it's not, not terribly hard to figure out, but does he keep in touch with you or do you ever get this feeling like, Oh man, I'm like losing revenue or, you know, my business isn't growing when you have to take that time. Yeah. Luckily, uh, Luckily, I have Shopify on my phone, so if he has a question, I can hop on my phone real quick. But obviously, I can't print labels for my phone. Yeah. Um, but it does suck. It's like when I'm gone for a month, not at the house, not at place where I do business, office, and all that stuff. I can't grow it. It's just staying steady, which I have like Google Shopping ads and other ads that are helping. But it's just like you can't sit in front of a computer and like grow it. You have to just hope it does well. Yeah, yeah. Like, I can make I can make Instagram posts, but like just it's it's rough and it's but. still not the same feel you can't do those product flybys when you're packing orders telling them yeah. why they purchase stuff you know that different right. experience you know yeah so that kind of sucks but you got to do what you got to do and then yeah yeah man i was thinking uh just a second ago are there any how often have you had to carry a product on the site just because of its popularity and because you know most people do enjoy it but you you just haven't liked it whether it be a flavor or a product how often does that happen? Uh, it happened right when I launched with with uh, with MTS Mark Lobliner. So you don't have to call out any brand, but go <laughs> no, ahead. No. <laughs> so there is there's brands obviously people want, but luckily I don't have I don't really have anything that like that's like yeah. that. I have core nutritionals, obviously. I think that's the only really prominent thing I have. Yeah. Um, but as I said, as I launched MTS, great brand, great products. People wanted it, but it's just doesn't sell like i think mm. yeah it just doesn't sell so sometimes i've noticed that at um the gym too it's like sometimes i'll get these drinks that you know like we'll throw up a question box like hey what brands would you like to get us at the front obviously it's a way smaller sample size because it's just energy drinks but you know like what would you like to see and uh you know they'll say x brand like more alani <laughs> new or more more of this or rains or bangs and you know we'll get them in and i'm like okay we'll buy them then <laughs> but you know it's just one thing you <laughs> yeah. have to like keep in mind is like Sometimes, uh, and you know this just, you know, even more than us is like, sometimes people will say, you know, they want X and then when it's actually yeah. on the website, it's like, uh, they still won't buy it or whatever. It's easy, yeah. to, easy to say what you would like, but when you yeah. have to spend your money, it's different. Yeah. Yeah. My buddy who runs a clothing brand local to me, he's, he told me when I started, he's like, the biggest way to go out of business is to listen to people. I was like, what do you mean? Yeah. He's like, well, he's like for me, if, if I bring in these like baseball shirt raglans and people tell me they want them but they don't sell ever. You keep listening to people and they don't sell them. You're going to go out of business because they don't yeah. sell. So especially supplements, there's an expiration date, shirts and clothing. There's no expiration date, but if you listen to people off Instagram, it's like, obviously you want to listen to people and listen to customers, but I just feel like that's also another way to go out of business because 
they want this brand, but this they don't buy this brand. They just crickets. So and I feel like you know maybe this is me thinking in my own personal way, but it, it probably does cross over to brand supplements, whatever clothing mm -hmm. is right. you know creating something that you would personally want as a self as yourself for the brand. So like when we create, let's say our pre workout or intra overcome whatever it's products that we would want to take ourselves you know and that's how we're able to stand behind it you know right. if we were to create products that like oh joe and dick and harry they they really like this but we're we're on the edge about it you know we'll make it anyways because we think they'll like it you know you're definitely going to lose that way because you right. won't be able to stand behind it first off and then second right. off it's just something that you know it's like the wind it could go either way yeah that's that's kind of how i started the nutrition junction is they asked me like, how did I come up with these products? I'm like, well, first off, all the products I launched with, I've tried and I'm lucky enough to know most of the brand owners of all the brands I started with. Um, so that's kind of helped me. They're like, well, why is, why'd you choose this brand? I'm like, well, first off, I know the owner and the people behind the brand and I've tried all these brands products before I even own my own company. So. Yeah. It's hard to sell. I've, I mean, I've never had to sell anything that usually I don't like, but it's hard to, it's truly is hard to sell and it's easy to, to smell it when somebody doesn't truly stand behind something that they're trying to talk you into or sell right. you or break down to you, you know? Right. Yeah. In the yeah. age of um, kind of like social media for brands or retailers, do you feel like there are other retailers that you look to a for like um, more of a business side or B for more of like a social media kind of marketing side? Is that something that's been a hurdle for you to kind of get over as far as social media marketing for yourself? Yeah. Um, biggest thing is like, I would compare myself to other people and like, yeah. I only really pay attention to two other retailers because they're my buddies, uh, Sean and NutriFit in Ohio. And then Jacob Davis in South Carolina, both those guys doing great things, especially yeah. Jacob, his skits are something, something, something different. Yeah. But, uh, I got a bad, I had, I had a bad habit of comparing myself. And then it's like, just got to sit down and realize they've been in business for years. I started like year ago so oh yeah you gotcha, gotcha. yeah. yeah so yeah. luckily i don't i don't pay attention to other retailers besides them because they're my yeah. buddies so yeah i think that's the right perspective to have too because you know whatever business is something like me and Austin have talked about with you know like bpn for example started like the same year gym flow did but completely yeah. different route as far as you know where they got their money you know what's going on in nick's life versus austin's life and different things that happen um you know around business and so it's you know it's, it's it's important to remember not only like when you started and know that you know you're in its infancy and things like that but also that everyone's journey is different uh, yeah. for better and for worse right you know? and yeah, i think i'm sorry i think listening or you know if you do fall into the trap of this the cycle of judging yourself against other people and you're like oh well i'm gonna you know you're focusing on their product the, the waters get muddy on your end and then you're, you're chasing how to beat them instead of how to just be your best. Right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That, and it's like, it'd be easy for me to look at Jacob's skits and it'd be like, Oh, Jacob does skits. I'm going to start doing skits just cause it works for him. doesn't mean it's going to yeah. work for me. Mm -hmm. You know, like once you fall into that trap, I feel like people will like starting to read behind your bullshit. So it's pretty easy to fall in that trap, but you just got to stay in your lane, do your own thing. And that's okay. it really, I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, with the year almost halfway over, I want you to put it out there in the universe. What's one of your biggest nutrition junction goals for the year? Um, man, just get closer to the retail spot, honestly. Yeah. Just get myself in a better financial situation because obviously everybody has their own story. So, um, yeah, that's – it'd be easy to put a dollar amount on it. I guess if I were to say is to get into the six-figure mark for sales, um, for yeah. revenue for the year, which is – a mighty goal, but I think we'll get there. Um, yeah. One thing I was thinking about when uh, earlier in the podcast, you were talking about how you kind of started is really the only main expense difference between online and in person, really just uh, renting and leasing that space. I mean, obviously there's electric and utilities and stuff too, but is, is that mainly the only extra thing or are there different kind of licenses or different things you got to do? Yeah. So there's, um, there's obviously that overhead for the retail spot. And then mm -hmm. say if I carry snacks, if it's a whole different thing when people walk into your store and they buy food items like outright that's bar, right. yeah. snack house puffs, you have to get like a retail food license and oh, yeah, uh, that's what we have. Yeah. 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 Okay. So it's probably the same as you guys. Cause once somebody walks, once somebody physically walks into your store and buys something consumable, you're almost considered like a grocery store. Yeah. Do you, all not, do you not have to do that as an online uh, no. retailer? No. Since huh. 
in my state at least, since uh, since other people are not walking in and like buying stuff, since it's just like a warehouse vibe, I don't, I mean, not really. So yeah. plus I don't really carry food anyways. So with powders, with protein, now if I carried like, if I wholesaled like clean eats, I, I would have to, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't wholesale it as a e-commerce site anyways. But um, the more you get into food, the more you have to, yeah. Um, with opening a store, do you plan to work all the hours yourself or do you plan on hiring employees out the gate? Uh, so the first, I mean, I f- I'm going to need employees, but I, I would like to, um, work it most myself just cause that's how I am. Yeah. Um, there's going to be a come a time where I can't work there as much, which yeah. I hope doesn't really come cause I love working supplement stores, mm-hmm. but there's going to be, there's always a time where I have to hire more people. So, yeah, that's something that, um, you know, obviously since we opened in November, Maddie and I have been the only ones working here. Luckily we've had, uh, you know, my parents worked a shift here or there for a time being. And then also we added a, uh, kind of like a temporary employee for like two, three weeks that would work like two shifts a week. And, um, it, you know, it's tough because, you know, you do, uh, not only miss out on, you know, maybe some social things that, you know, I don't really like go out a lot, but you know, some, some free time to actually do some things. And the biggest right. thing was spending time with her and spending time together because time at work or time at the gym isn't, it's just not the same. Right. Um, but uh, it is kind of one of those things I feel like you have to push through, especially if you don't have, you know, a, a ton of uh, partners or investors is, uh, you know, you're, you're going to have to kind of troop through for a while um, right. before you have the excess profits and, and funds to, um, you know, hire employees and things like that. So I know we're switching to a key card system um, in a few weeks, which is going to be a big help for us yeah. so we can keep staff costs low. Um, and luckily, since we are a smaller gym, um, you know, it's a little bit easier to manage. But uh, right. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's the hardest thing because I've hired, I've I've been a manager at other stores, other departments, mm-hmm. other industries. Like I'm I'm good at hiring people, but like it's the whole, whole different world when you hire for your business because it's like hiring somebody to babysit your kids. Now I have no kids, but mm-hmm. I feel like you'd be that same thing. Your business you is your baby. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, so that, it's like stressful. The people you hire are a representation of your brand. You know, or right. they should be. Yeah. Right. Or the way you yeah. pick them, and right. fortunately, I guess you know, wanting to be a part of your, your shop right out the gate as much as you want to, you know, is a good thing because that's you fostering, you know, those relationships with those initial customers, customers that you hopefully create as a family there. And then, you know, they refer people word of mouth spreads because, oh, Jesse's the guy, Jesse's the guy, you know, and uh, it just compounds on itself like that. You know, because if you had a bunch of random, not random strangers, but, you know, part-timers in and out, nobody really gets to create a relationship. Right. Some, some do, but, you know, if you have, you know, that nobody that's steady, it's, yeah, Cause my, my thing is always like, even when I worked at previous stores, it's like part-timers, I don't want to say they don't give a shit, but like most of them don't give a shit because they work maybe two or three times a week. Most of them is just for side cash. Unless you find a really like passionate person that likes supplements, most part-timers probably won't give a shit. And it's kind of sucks saying that, but it's just like, the sooner you realize that is the, the better, I guess. But Yeah. And I think it's just hard as a small business owner, whether it is you know, gym flow, nutrition junction, or the gym to, uh, you know, when you have to hire someone at any point, or even when a customer buys or a member comes in, it's hard for them to really understand that everything they see has been paid for by you. Oftentimes with personal money, it's not business profits. And, and, uh, not only like the time sacrifice, but like, you know, from paper towels in the bathroom or labels, you know, extra money spent on labels, like You know, it's hard to get someone to truly appreciate, you know, all those little things. And at the end of the day, like you said, you just have to understand that they just aren't going to appreciate them on the same level as you. Yeah. Um, But ideally, you get someone that still treats it with care like a newborn and, uh, you know, wants to see it grow and is is, uh, invested in you as much as the brand. Yeah. Yeah. I see it's it's like Gary Vee and Andy Strasell, all these guys, they get questions of like, all their business owners asking, how do I get my employees to care about my business as much? Yeah. As, it's like, either you're not going to find it. So good yeah. luck. But like if, and if one of your employees cares more as much, if somebody, one of your employees cares more than you about your business or equally you, you might want to like take a look at yourself for yeah. a second. Cause that's pretty hard to find. So, yeah, I get it. Yeah. It's tough to find like somebody that fits yeah. the culture, I guess, you know, cause we're, we're looking to hopefully have some people join our team and help create more awareness, more of an experience with Gymflow and create a team and a family atmosphere. But it's it's hard to just, you know, find somebody that fits 
And finding culture. genuine people. Yeah, genuine is hard. people. I yeah, mean, that's, that's it. Yeah. I just feel like you know everyone's chasing you know who whatever supplement you know company and give them the best deal. I mean, I see a lot of competitors around the area that just jump from brand to brand, and yeah. um, you know it's just frustrating. Uh, you know, when, the uh, the yeah. hard thing I feel like too is I don't know if y'all feel this way, but it's hard to find because there are plenty of people who are nice. There are plenty of people who like you know they want to help you out. They want to be nice, but are they fully like invested the same yes. way that you are? Do they want to yeah. see you grow or help out in that journey in the same way? Are they just trying to like, you know, agree with, with you, if that makes sense too. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like I was telling him, I was talking to Jacob a couple of weeks ago and I was like, he has his, like he has Isaac and he has Chitwood. I told him, I was like, I got to find my Isaac and Chitwood. Cause those Dude, two guys, exactly. like it's, it's just like, I feel like everybody needs those guys. Like yeah. guys like that because yeah, it's, it's something special i guess you can say but once you yeah. find those guys like your right hand man it's it's hard to find which i didn't think it would be but it's hard as, it's hard as shit to find them so how did you how did you connect with the other retailers that you're friends with in other states were y'all retailers and then became friends or so back uh shoot i think i met jacob through the snoop group so through uh, justin supplement snoop mm-hmm. um same way i met austin but yeah oh geez sean at nutrifit i was doing videos for my old store Cause we were a franchise. So I had a little bit more leniency in what I could do. We weren't corporate. So a little more freedom, but Sean from NutriFit found me through Instagram and it's just, that was four or five years ago now, I think. So yeah, that's, awesome. yeah, yeah. that's the only two retailers I really know of or talk to. Um, there's other ones out there obviously, but I get it. Um, you do ambassadors or like affiliates with your site, right? How- how is, right. how has that been growing that? Um, it, it's not as much as you think, to be honest. Um, it's not, it's it, not as much as I'd hope, to be honest. Um, they're all, they're all really good dudes. Um, but it's not like people think once you get ambassadors, your sales are going to go up like oh, that. No. It's, it's like not we, yeah. We tried it years oh. ago and we, yeah. we just, like, I, I guess I just didn't invest enough time or like energy or love into it. Right. And I wasn't on board to begin with because the word ambassador or affiliate just like gives a bad taste in my mouth the way some yeah. brands do it. But it's just like I haven't found my sweet spot on how I want to start it or even the concept of how we would want to put our own twist on it. But It's just tough because I think, you know, everyone wants to sign up for a discount code or to make yeah. sales. But it's yeah. like, one, not everyone has the influence to make sales so you're trying to look for a person that not necessarily has a big following but people who follow them are all about them you know there's some people i follow on instagram only have 900 a thousand followers but you know you see the comments like people are engaged with them and that's what you want um but then again like we talked about earlier trying to get someone that not only like likes all or nothing but they're all about gym flow like they check in on austin they're like oh man like you know, y'all should try this or, you know, they have ideas, they have passion for the brand yeah. and it's hard to convince someone to have passion for the brand. Even if they like the product, that doesn't always mean they're going to have passion for that. And it's something that just takes time or it just takes, you know, authenticity, you know, so right. it's hard, you know, whether it is, you know, your company or whatever, just with ambassadors, right. I think it's just, you know, it's tough. It's like one in a million yeah. with these people. Yeah. Ambassadors, the ambassador programs are tough. Cause it's like the last thing I want is to like have a nutrition junction discount code fucking everywhere. Yeah. And it's like, that's just not what I want to do. So I started with like, I have like six, seven guys right now that I've known them for a while. A couple of them are in the Snoop group and they're just good dudes. I've talked to them before. They're actually some of my top customers that bought a lot of shit. So I'm like, Hey man, it's a way to reward them. You know? Yeah. I was like, you know, I don't, I didn't go into it expecting it to be like, have a big old sales surge. I just, more people help get the word out. Yeah. Um, at the end of the day, it's, I'm going to try to not make this sound kind of like douchey, but it's free marketing because they're helping you get their word out there. And it's like, it encourages them. They can make money. They can, you know, so. And the main thing you said, and I want to refer back to their circle back is that they were already customers with you. Most right. of them are majority or your, your best ones. Right. And that's the case. Most people have never even like, you know, that'll reach out to us, Jim flow. Like, yeah. Hey, I want to be a, a part of your team or part of the affiliate thing or, or yeah. be an ambassador for you, but yeah. I've never seen us, never yeah. followed us, never tried <laughs> a thing from us. I'm like, yeah. dude, what are you talking about, man? You don't yeah. even know if you like us. Yeah. It's right. like, it, yeah. It makes, 
it makes me laugh because people like try that with me. Like when I first I had a form on the website, they filled it out. I got their email and they said, Oh, I've ordered multiple times. And like, do people realize we can search for your name and our yes. order history and not find you and like see your, your BS. Cause like you definitely have never ordered from me before. So. I even had, uh, you know, I've had people, I guess two of that immediately come to my mind that, you know, they come for a day pass, you know, they're nice. I'm nice towards them, you know, enjoy the gym, blah, blah. And then like a week or two later, they're like, hey, like, do you mind putting this poster up or this uh, these business cards up at the front? And I'm like, no. <laughs> like, you know, I see where this like, is going. Like, one, you think uh, one day pass gives you permission to get that free marketing at the front of my gym. And yeah. it's like, how about you develop a relationship with me first? It doesn't yeah. even have to be like a membership. But just actually right. develop a relationship, stand for the brand before yeah. I just immediately hop on your brand. It's just, right. uh, it's ignorant. And, um, yeah. yeah, you just see it too often. It's yeah, kind of like kind of like my my gym Moss campaign is the owner i've i met him god six seven years ago when he first bought that when he first bought it and he was redoing it and everything and i was a trainer at i was i was a trainer at his gym back when i did that now like six years later i'm lifting at his new location he comes up to me and remembers me and he, we talk and he asks what i'm doing now and then that's when we get into the whole like let me help you think cause the supplements you sell here suck so yeah. um that's <laughs> That's something that I would recommend doing versus what people do to you, Brock, is like, that's just shitty. It's like, get to know them. It's like, obviously, I didn't own a business when I first met yeah. this this gym owner, but like now I know him. And it's like, it would have been easy for me to go up to him right away and ask him, but it's like, I didn't know. It's ask. genuine at that point. You develop yeah. that relationship and that right. uh, camaraderie. And uh, yeah, when people just, you know, it's just snake oil salesman when, you know, people just come here and they yeah. immediately think they can do this. I mean, we had, you know, one guy that was going to train here. Um, and then literally like the next week he's like, Oh no, I'm actually going to stay at this other gym because they're going to promote me. And then literally the week after that, he's over at a gold gym and yeah. it's like, you can just see with these people, There's no loyalty. You can see with these yeah. people, they have no loyalty. They have no like just uh discipline to just, you know, stick with something or respect for their company. Yeah. And, uh, you just, you just want to, don't want to get anywhere near those kinds of people because they yeah. just bring not only bad energy, but you know, that it affects your brand's reputation, yeah. you know? And it's the kind of the same thing with like when other brands like reach out to me. Most of the time it's my personal page. It's not even my like business page. They want obviously they want me to carry their brand or their brand they rep for. And it's so disingenuous. Like the number one way to not get on my site is like they ask me, hey, how I'm doing? And then immediately follow up with like <laughs> and hey, then the copy are, and paste message. <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah. hey, here's our price sheet. I'm like, why'd you ask me how I'm doing? You obviously don't care. You just want me <laughs> hey, to how you doing? But what it's about what, what about these work. prices though? Yeah. yeah, they're like, Hey, how you doing, man? I don't even reply. I don't don't see it they immediately follow up with their sales sheet I'm like dude fuck yeah. off like, what are you hey, doing send it bro like, send it yeah it's just i've called <laughs> a few of them out i was like I was like hey man like if you want me to sell your shit just be upfront about it don't try to act disingenuous asking me how i am yeah it's like get out of here man what are you doing <laughs> so people yeah. are funny i bet man i can only imagine being a store uh how many different brands bozos hit you up, hit you up. Day, yeah. some I'm, of the sure, I'm sure there's plenty of good salesmen out there too you know i know yeah. a, a few of them but it's just like yeah. Man. Some of the some of the broken English these like supplement reps talking oh, insane. I'm like, how do you yeah. like my my <laughs> my sixth grade cousin can spell better than you? What are you doing? Yeah. Like, he's in sixth grade, so it's I don't know. People are wild. How are you doing? You need to take a piss break, bro. Are you good? good? Oh, he's yeah, got the, he's got the, you got the it. catheter. Yeah, got the catheter. <laughs> you got the Same catheter stuff. bag. <laughs> in. No man, I got the bag yeah. right below the TV. <laughs> yeah. Pissing in the bag. It sounds awful. I saw this thing on Facebook. It was uh, like, you know, if you, instead of peeing in a bottle, it had almost like a cup attached to a bottle to where you could kind of like cup funnel? over your junk. It was like a funnel. Yeah, and you'd pee right into what the, the What's the girl one called? Diva cup? Oh, Diva, Diva cup. That's not for peeing. <laughs> what's that for? That's for the period blood. It fills oh. up in the cup. <laughs> and then they take it out. Is so this going to be an Instagram story highlight? Yes. <laughs> nice. I didn't know what a Diva cup was. Yeah. Did you know that? Now you know no, what I'm getting for Christmas. Ugh. Don't eat. Yeah, don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, you know, one question I got on the box, it wasn't related to you, unfortunately. But, <laughs> but uh, it would be a good question because Austin mentioned, of course, you've had uh, Jim Flow and All or Nothing. You've tried, I believe, all the flavors. You had Cherry Freeze, right? Yes. Right. Sir. Okay. So um, the question was, what's your favorite flavor? Oh. Probably now that the cherry's out, probably cherry. But before that, the lime one. 
Lime. Yeah, That's I mine. think um yeah, both of us, at least Austin, I know, it's lime and then I think cherry and green monster are like tied. Yeah. For me. What are your top three favorite supplements in general, brand or flavor? Jimplo, of course. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah uh, th- this will get edited out if you don't say that. I'm Austin Page and I approve this <laughs> yeah. message. Yeah. Just kidding. Yeah. No, you, ring them off, dude. God, usually with me, it's all caffeine or like nootropics since I still work overnights. So yeah. that kind of fucks me up sometimes. But um, God, I don't even know, to be honest with you. I have so many. It's all the products I like. But my top, one of my top threes um, are probably Devastated Union from Inspired. That's a good one. That one. Um, when I don't work overnights, it, I, high stem prees are my, my, I love it. So I'm like tonight when I have to work overnights, I wouldn't do a high stem pre. So I do like a lower stem pre. Um, so it's honestly kind of all, all over the board for me. It'd be hard to pick. It's kind of like my favorite movie. It's so hard to pick like a top three. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Yours, many... his is Jason, Jason, and yeah. Jason. Yeah. <laughs> how, about Michael, you, man? Uh, how many do you keep in rotation since you are managing a supplement store? I imagine you, you know, you've tried so many, but you probably have a lot of many, uh, a lot of them on hand that you probably rotate around. Yeah, I have, uh, two or three. So I have the, oh, I, have the okay. two, I have the new gym flow one and then I have two other ones, but it's like right when I started, there's all these other brands that wanted to send me their shit. And I'm like, that's cool. But like, I can't promise I'll bring it in right away. Like, yeah. as long as you're cool with that. Cause there's a brand recently sent me their stuff and I told them that. And like a day after I got it, like, Hey, so do you want to price you? I'm like, let's pump the brakes, Whoa. dude. <laughs> like I told you I'm not, it's like bag off lady. Yeah. It's like, Hey, yeah. but and like, yeah, yeah, not as like, Austin, like, you know, people in the Snoop group, some of them, they're like, oh, this is probably nothing like Jesse's. But I was like, you actually have more than me. I don't even have that much in my cover right now. Yeah. So it's like, first off, especially when a new product comes in, I'd rather keep it for the customers. And if I can snag one down the line, I will. But I just don't take out of my inventory. Like, mm-hmm. what my, what people might think, I put a limit to it. Like, once a yeah, month, I'll yeah. take a, whatever I need. But it's, yeah. So not as much as someone would think. But Can't get high on your own supply, brother. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> the other quickest way to lose business is doing that. Yeah, so, right. Well, yeah. I, I'm Austin puts a muzzle on us. Now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I hide all the all the shit. Yeah, uh, now. <laughs> Take one home this weekend. Yeah. yeah. Nice. But, um, what was I gonna ask? Uh, shit. Not movies. Um, what color color underwear he's wearing? No, nah, not that. No, I'm sure it's pink. <laughs> it's Damn, I lost it when we were talking about his top picks. Movies. Shows? No. Do you have any more, Griffin? No, that was that was pretty much it. Damn. Well, I did get a question uh, on my Instagram before I lose my track of thoughts. I'll have to try and think of the question uh, later. Is let me actually pull it up for the wording, and uh, it was kind of it made me chuckle because I was like, I definitely guarantee I can beat one of y'all that's sitting here. The other one, it would be a fight, and it's it's how much am I willing to blow a bicep tendon out to win? <laughs> And like it says, an can we get an arm wrestling match like over the top? Now, Brock, sorry, I think I can, I think I can beat you, Griffin. Have you seen these forearms though? I Griffin, know. I think, I think Griffin would be the you match I where I'd have to. Well, I, I think you put up a fight. Oh, th- well, then I'm lose. I'm, I'm not left handed. <laughs> but <laughs> I got right, right hand rules. Now. Yeah, I, I swore that you were right handed, but I forgot you are weird and left handed. Yeah, I might switch. Oh, damn. Well, yeah. we, what if we just did both arms? Oh, it's yeah. Straight, it's straight core. The uh, passion. Yeah. You know what, Austin? I think you might win out. I feel like there's something to like old man strength as you get older. Yeah, like <laughs> each gray hair. I got a few yeah. grays definitely uh, there to, for yeah. the power. But uh, I still can't think of what I was going to ask earlier, man. Sorry about that. But uh, it happens all the time one. to me. Yeah, it's been a good one, dude. And uh, it sounds like we might be seeing each other here soon uh, down in South Carolina, maybe. Yeah, June, July. I don't know if they have an official date, but yeah, sometime. Dude. Another another banger, and uh, excited just to to get to see everybody again, especially you and uh, Jacob and all of them down there as well. It's it's cool that we're able to get together. I mean, I've been dying to you know do what something. Is that? Uh, I don't remember. I had to look at my phone. Because Maddie and I might be in South Carolina. Ooh, okay. Dang, I'm gonna have to hold down the fort this. here. I don't yeah. we'll make it on that, but mm. yeah, okay. A love fest. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> <fest>. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> Bring the red speedo. Yeah. yeah. But uh, thank you, thank you again for coming on the show, yeah. my man. Hey guys, thanks for having me. And yeah. people can find you obviously nutritionjunction.com, But any Instagram handles you want to throw in there? 
Yeah, just uh, Jesse Westover. So J E S S E, then West and over. It's kind of how it sounds. Yeah. So. Yeah, dude. Well, thank yeah. you again, my man. And uh, we'll have this up here shortly. And cool. uh, hopefully we'll catch up again. Maybe maybe a little later down the road once you get that retail store open. Yeah. Yeah, man, for sure. No doubt. Big, big things coming. Oh, yeah. All right, boss, man. We'll talk to you soon. We're out of here. All right. Thanks, fellas.